So, of all the Plex, of all the Lol Cars, there's one that absolutely catches people's eyes and I think maybe one of the most popular to buy. And it's probably very reasonable to say it is actually rather common in the trade. It's not too difficult to breed, even though it might have a lower fecundity. And this is the Zebraplex, Hypensistra Zebra. Hypensistra itself is a very popular genus. It's very adaptable. Although it does prefer high temperatures, 28 and above, it is adaptable in its diet. Um, it could deal with quite a well variety of conditions. It just obviously does best almost like it is a nature, maybe a more quiet tank. But they have been very popular and very easy, well, um, very um, successful breeders in captivity but what if they well what if they got banned from the trade or what if trade was restricted how could this um well influence how we sit well how many we see in captivity at the moment so generally they were first introduced to Appendix 3, probably quite, I don't know how long ago, but I have a feeling it was maybe a decade ago, or Brazil did restrict them in general as a sort of a national, um, well, other than just through CITES. This did rocket the price up. At one point, I believe they were worth around £20 each. This did push the price up to about 100 and that sort of uh, retail price, trade price would be very different. And therefore, this has meant that breeders often charge probably similar amounts, maybe, well, slightly cheaper for the fish, rather than quite often you'll see that breeders will charge maybe different prices, um, depending on a lot of different factors anyway. But could this mean that the Hype and Sister Zebra goes beyond that £100 mark? I don't know. Um... It would mean that for the trade itself, that would push the price up because traditionally these fish are coming from Southeast Asia and uh, Europe, so Czech Republic, uh, maybe Germany as well. This does make it a little bit more difficult though, especially with the latest proposals. So CITES has proposed that... Um, Hypensistra zebra goes from Appendix 3, where it was just banned from export from Brazil, to CITES Appendix 1. And the reason for this is that many are smuggled across from Brazil, where they're endemic to the uh, Rio Zingu, and maybe, I don't know about a few rivers around that area, but endemic to Brazil. But they were then smuggled across to Colombia or Peru, where there were no restrictions. Um... And these are wild caught fishes. Therefore, this has put pressures, pressure on an already, um, well, sensitive species to, um, well, um, that there's a lot of pressure already on this species. There's the Belimonte Dam um, on the Rio Zingu. Um, and this is causing, obviously, a lot more issues. Uh, Another thing I'd have to ask is how many, how reliable is our captive breeding? Um, how reliable is it that we're saying how many are being captive bred, I think I should say. But generally, when you buy them in the stores, they will be captive bred uh, from those places that I said, Czech Republic and Southeast Asia. But they have been bred many times in the UK. They, the higher temperatures does make them a little not very economically uh, viable, I'd say, if you're looking to make a good profit anyway. But this has meant that generally it's people after those wild caught fishes or maybe there's a bit of fisheries fraud going in. I don't know. And I do mean to do a load of reading into that. But what do these proposals mean and what does CITES mean? So here is the CITES website. So people, it's not always the clearest because it, it does cover a lot of uh, kind of more sort of formal wording. It's got particular wording, which um, even I'm not particular, uh, particularly familiar with. I'm not someone that's really ever particularly studied the international trade in uh, species. But here's the CITES website. So 
for people not clear on CITES, CITES works by sub subjecting international um, subjecting international trade in specimens and certain controls. Not all species are under CITES. I mean, not all countries are under CITES. Obviously, not all species are listed. So this covers all import, export, re-export and introduction from the sea of species covered in the convention and it has to be authorised through a licensing system and each party, I assume each party would mean country so not all countries are in it that's how probably some species are a lot more easier to get without the CITES paperwork um, so we're looking particularly at Appendix 1 and Appendix 2. Appendix 3, quickly, Appendix 3 only covers within one country. So this is, um, so basically Hypensistra zebra was basically originally within Appendix 3. That meant it was protected within Brazil. It is only found in Brazil. That meant it could not be exported from Brazil. And these are only certain uh, controls. It's not like... Um, I'd assume it wouldn't entirely mean that they couldn't have imported in. And it doesn't mean there's a total ban. As it says, they are protected. So protections would mean like there is the ban on export, but it might also mean that um, there's uh, you might need paperwork, you might have certain restrictions on importing and exporting. So it might even mean like it's not always the most clear. And... So here we've got Appendix 1. So this is species threatened with extinction. From memory, Hypensistra zebra is Appendix 3. Therefore, it is threatened with extinction. So Hypensistra zebra is critically endangered on the IUCN red list. There's different red lists uh, depending where you go, uh, which country. So IUCN is international. Um, which is International Union, uh, something like that. And they do, do a lot of, um, they do, obviously don't cover, they can only cover so many species, they're very limited funding. Um, but so it is threatened to extinction. Just because it's not on IUCN or a national list, it doesn't mean it's not threatened to extinction. Um, I should make that very clear because species go extinct and they haven't even been assessed or they haven't been assessed in a while maybe there's mistakes with the assessment there's also national lists so china has a list hence um i think it's the high fin banded shark chinese high fin banded shark very striking species that is actually not you need a license in the uk to have it but it is listed as threatened of extinction in china brazil has its own list and this is how uh, from my understanding, is how some things are easy to export um, from Brazil and maybe some are a bit more restricted in numbers and you kind of get quotas, um, so numbers that you can export. So trading these specimens is permitted only with exceptional circumstances. So it will really depend, I think, on what the reason is for the trade and whether if they're captive bred i think they go under slightly different um there's a bit more like maybe more i don't know leniency don't obviously i'm not going to sort of say that like exactly but so it'd probably be for like breeding projects scientific studies um breeding projects is in zoological collections Appendix 2, this one's the really iffy one because it's like, it's not as clear cut. And actually a good example so I use on Appendix 1 is the monkey puzzle tree. So that is a really beautiful, unique, uh, primitive um, morphologically and as a taxa, it's um, quite an ancient taxa of plant. I think it's a gymnosperm, um, it's not a flowering plant, angiosperm. Um, that's actually on Appendix 1. And if you've gone to a garden centre, especially in the UK, they will have monkey puzzle trees. Because as we go up here, I believe it's because this is international trade. It covers import, export, re-export and introduction from the sea. So that's not 
internal. It's not within the same country. And it might even be within the same... Would it be trade body? So um, the e, um, EU might count as one body, whereas the UK would be another. Um, and then the USA might be another, but then it might be included with their trade body, which is Mexico and Canada. But I don't think so, because I think there's quite a few restrictions between the different countries rather than the EU, which is a lot more free going. But you can see here, it's got a lot more. Um, import permit issued by management authority of the state. So that would be, um, oh my God, what would it? Uh, oh, D DIFRA, Department for uh, like Farming and Agriculture or something like that. And then export permit may be issued if the specimen is legally obtained. So this would be mostly on captive bred. So that's probably how a lot of captive bred ones can sort of... Because when you import uh, Scleropagus formosus, the Asian arowana, they will come with a microchip and a CITES paperwork. Obviously, you can't stick a microchip in the hypensitia zebra. Um, it's too small. I wouldn't want to risk it. Um, God knows whether they will maybe do that because you'd need to track individuals. But this is for export of individuals. So legally obtained, so they're captive bred. And you, you've got to be able to prove they're captive bred. Um, and not detrimental to survival of the species. Um, or an import license has already been issued. I think that would be the paperwork anyway. But it's worth reading. Um, and then a re-export a re certificate may only be issued if it was imported with the provisions of the convention and if an import permit has been issued. In the case of a live animal plant, it must be prepared to be shipped to minimum risk of injury, damage to health or cruel treatment. So that's, I would say, general... How fish are exported imports, you can't really... There's no other real way around it. So that's the actual CITES, sort of an introduction to how CITES works. So here is the original CITES. Um, so the original, what's it? CITES appendices listing species. Um, and this says it's valid from June, uh, 22nd of June, 2022. So if it gets introduced to Appendix 1, I don't know when that'll be. Um, but let's go down. So I'll, just, I'll scroll down for a little bit. So we've got all the mammals. They're all in scientific names, obviously. Um, God, so these are... God, that's uh, even-toed ungulates. More even-toed ungulates being stuff like... Was it cows, pigs, deer, antelope? I think uh, maybe I've gone past the odd toes, but uh, and then here is cats. Obviously, all your big cats: panthera, tigress. That's the tiger. Uh, ooh, panthera leo. That's the um. Okay, so the, that's actually quite interesting. So this would be the lion. I'm not sure whether all lions are the same species because you've got like the African lion and then you've got like Barbary lion. Um, obviously this is, uh, and then Puma. Yeah. So if we go down, 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 you can see all the different animals, uh, birds, there are massive gaps and you can see a real bias. So we're going through all of these vertebrates, 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 vertebrates. Um, and all of these are tetrapods. They're not fish. <laughs> Bear in mind, this is not the largest group of animals and we're already most the way down the page. Oh, there we go. Well, fish. Bear in mind, we've still got plants to go. Um, not even insects. Uh, so these are obviously stingrays. Uh, these are freshwater rays. There's Motoro. That's Appendix Three. So export out of the out of what's it? Colombia. Restricted. Sorry, Colombia. There. All of them out of Brazil are restricted. And then down, down sharks. 
Anguilla Day. Anguilla, Anguilla. That's the European eel, I think. Oh, that's sturgeon. Just going down. And then we've got siluriforms, Lorcardae, Hypencistrus zebra. And this column is for Appendix 3, Appendix 2, Appendix 1. So it looks like for now it's in Appendix 3. Um, obviously, here's an interesting one. Pa Pangasidon gigas, that is the Mekong catfish. There's only two catfish in this list, yet they're still so threatened. Um, many of them are threatened, a lot of Pangasidae in general, not just that species. But here is CITES, and you could go through and see everything restricted on CITES. Cites down, down. These are corals. Of course, corals, loads of people love corals, so they go straight on that. Oh, these plants, asparagus. So that's um, asparagus family, I'd say. Ginseng. Ah, oh, that's the one. Only the population of the Russian Federation. Ah, see, this is the monkey puzzle tree, and it's straight on Appendix 1. So I find that an interesting comparison, because you don't actually need paperwork to buy it within the UK, as long as it's grown in the UK, I guess. Um, ponytail palm, do, 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 there's loads on here. Cactus, because cactus are heavily. Anyway, um, let me... So, as you, this is the CITES um, website again, and as you can see, so, I don't know, is it possible to say people might be jumping the gun a bit? Um, so this is the 19th meeting, it's a conference, so people are actually discussing it, provisional list of proposals. So that doesn't mean that it's a definite, it's just what people are proposing, so it'll be an argument for, I guess, and against. Um, with people such as scientists, maybe people in industry, but generally like conservationists, ecologists, stuff like that. So you can see there's loads of different species. Oh, and it's published on the 23rd of June, so that's after the previous one. And this is to be discussed in, in November of this year. So quite a way ahead. Doesn't mean bye 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 all your hype and sister zebra because you could be in for a massive put the price up and then it will crash um if it doesn't go through it's just a provisional list doesn't mean it will well um so that's birds reptiles amphibians sharks so a lasmobank shark um actinopterguide which is your bony fish Oh, that's in it. Um, I think that's. Isn't that that's like sea cucumbers? I think. Not sure. Anyway, so this is Hypencistra zebra, to be moved. Um, found in Brazil to be moved to Appendix One. So if we go on here, this lists. Oh my God! It, that's great. I don't speak Portuguese. Um. But would, this would list the, um, it might be, it's Panama, so maybe it is Spanish, but I was never taught it. Um, I don't, oh, I'm going to have to get Google Translate on it. But this is the actual thing proposing it to be moved to Appendix 1. If you can read Spanish, you'll probably find it easier than me to. So this will put together the arguments for and against uh no i don't but this will put everything will be the argument um so yeah that's the actual proposal itself which can easily be found um was it for cop is it in plants? Appendix one. Oh, just, just curious what else they've got. Um, oh, so it's COP19 in Panama. So that's November. That will be that. So that will be proposed. Whether it will go through or not is another thing. 
Um, I'm not particularly familiar with it. Will go through or it won't go through. Um, um, like how likely a proposal will go through, opposed to it not. Especially when it's maybe a more traded species um, and it's quite popular. But maybe that's a good argument for it going through. So how does it affect us in the UK? I think we, if it goes through, we'd have to see. Um, because obviously we have very different legislation to America and um, even Europe now. So it might not mean that there's an outright national ban. Um, and if, the thing is, is that if you're going to... If people, the country's going to propose that every individual has to be tagged for even national trade, like within the same country, or well, within the UK, um, it would it would be difficult because you can't exactly tag each individual to an individual for like a microchip and then attach a certificate because what would happen was it would be each individual would have to have a certificate. For wild caught, this would be more, I would say, possible because obviously you could bag them, um, and that's what would be required for na international import export, and that I think is out of even hobbyist sort of realm, um, because you would need, I'd assume anyway, so, um, a certificate for each individual. I wonder how it works for insects. I'm not going to, with corals, I think they, you can't exactly, each individual coral has a little tag or certificate. No, um, it'd be done by a colony, I don't know, that you could, they could have a metal tag on them. Um, it does mean that you'd have to be, if you're looking at import-export, you'd have to be a lot more careful because, I don't know, I think you have to be careful anyway, um, with a lot of species. It's a really difficult one. So, it's one that you just have to wait and see, really. And the US. I have no idea how US law even works. But the US has banned Scleropagus formosus, the Asian arowana. That is an Appendix 1 species. And that is because it's on the Appendix 1. So, does that mean they're banned the Hypencystra zebra outright? I would say, I don't know, maybe it could mean, I if you read the legislation regarding sighted species, it could mean it. So, basically, I, first we've got to see whether it even goes through, and then how each country implements it, because, and not all species are in sighties anyway. So... It always, it does actually, it's always annoyed me, to be honest. There is such a focus on hype and sister zebra. And I've always said that people have almost an addiction to certain species, certain taxa. And hype and sister being one of them. And when you put so much pressure on one taxa, it does cause issues. But there's plenty of alternatives. One of my favourite is Pecoltia copter. The leopard fog pleco, it holds its coloration unlike most um, hypencystrus that might be similar. And it's just, it's a striking small species. It's a lot more adaptable with temperature. It could go down to 25. Um, they're reasonably easy-ish uh, to breed. Pocoltia come with their own challenges, but they get this beautiful markings when they age. Um so they're definitely worth looking at. Um, other species, Pacoltia has so much selection. Um, maybe avoid Pacoltia sabagei. It is big. There's another Pacoltia, I can't remember off the top of my head, which also grows quite large. Uh, what else do we have? Um, obviously, Hypencistrus, plenty of alternatives there. L201, spotted, but has beautiful coloration. Um Stripe, there's loads of striped ones. Uh, Hypensis frunculus, L66, L333, uh, Del Brita. The only issue I'd say, Hypensistrus in general, as they age, they do loot, they do start to really show it. They sort of grey scale, I call it, out. So they're not always, maybe 
for long term, law cars in general, they change a lot of age and you wouldn't even recognise the adults against the juveniles. Um, other taxa, oh, obviously we've got uh, the Hemian sisters or untrue Hemian sisters, so as the green and blue phantom, which is Hemian sisters subreverdis and L128. Uh, Hemian sisters, Gura Hyborium. I think, oh, there's so many law cards that even let's look small and let's go for a hyperpotomines. Um and you got um uh rhino autosynclus, rhino synclus, um, which is a new genus. Striking fishes and they're small. Um but there's so much selection. You've got one thousand and twenty actually it's probably more now. Let's say one thousand and thirty species to choose from. How can we all be so focused on the hypensistra zebra? There's so much selection outside that. Um, and as if we distribute our focus, yes, many are wild caught. And I've done a whole video on wild caught because we focus so much on the issues of wild caught, we never look at the benefits and we never look at the benefit, uh, the negatives even of captive breeding and um, farmed livestock, uh, farmed stock. So it's just well worth looking into anyway and just research some are challenging sometimes it's worth thinking law cards yeah they're challenging but if you really like them why not really research them and devote a tank to them or base the tank around them and choose the rest of the fish around it because there's plenty you can do and there's plenty of other striking ones that i can't think of the top of my head um but anyway uh thank you for watching if you like my videos please comment subscribe like whatever um obviously uh it's probably i've got the facebook groups um but i uh, was it furthering freshwater fish keeping is probably well worth if you want to discuss it um but anyway thank you for watching